It's Friday, the 8th of December. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. I've been flying for 47 years. I currently own a light twin 1959 Cessna 310, not too different from this 1967 Beach Travel Air 9 Bravo Bravo. There is an unprecedented pilot shortage around the world today and a huge rush of pilots to get through training to fill these airline pilot jobs. And part of the problem is the knee-jerk reaction of Congress years ago to up the minimum requirement to get a job with the airlines from 250 hours to 1,500 hours. So young pilots all around the world are scrambling to do anything they can to build up enough time to get these 1,500 hours of flying in before they can apply for the airlines. And the irony of this is that once they get to the airlines, all of this dangerous training that we're about to talk about in this latest crash is the fourth crash in just the last year involving light twin training and VMCA demos. The irony is that once you get to the airlines, all this dangerous training is done in the simulator. But until you get to the airlines, you have to do this, this training in these aircraft. And it can be done safely if you know what you're doing. Let's check out this latest accident. I got somebody coming off behind you. So what setting did you want to take over to the practice area? Uh, we can kind of extend it out a little bit. We can go west on if we need us to. Not a problem. Not a problem. You can either stay on that heading or turn further to the west, but don't go to the east. Alright, roger that. Uh, continue present heading or west and no further to the east. Probably not a problem. Mayday, 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 nine bar, bravo. Nine bar, bravo, stay again. Nine bar, bravo, and a spin. Three, six, nine, bravo, bravo, I'm not understanding your translation, stay again. Nine. Nine bar, bravo, and a spin. Mayday, mayday, mayday. And I'm trying. I'm trying. Nine bar, bravo, try the opposite rudder, try to get the wings level. Aircraft 900 miles northwest of Huntsville Airport, 1,300 westbound at your frequency. Huntsville Approach, this is Skyline 756, Papa Papa. 756, Papa Papa, Huntsville Approach. Uh, we believe an airplane may have gone down west of your position, and we were wondering if you could overfly to try to confirm. Roger, we can overfly to the west. Just give us direction. Six Papa Papa. There's absolutely nothing ATC can do to help you once you've entered a spin, especially in one of these light twins. The proper sequence is aviate, navigate, and communicate. Communicate last. But there's nothing that ATC can do, do to help you with this situation. The fact that somebody was on the radio declaring I'm in a spin indicates to me that either A, they're obviously terrified, and B, they perhaps maybe don't know what they're doing with a spin recovery procedure in a light twin. The problem is once you've entered a spin in one of these light twins, you have entered test pilot territory. These aircraft are specifically placarded against, prohibited against doing intentional spins. An inadvertent spin in one of these aircraft can be terrifying and can be very hard to recover from, if not nearly impossible. Why? Because of the design of the twin engine aircraft with two engines outboard of the fuselage and fuel outboard of those engines, there is simply too much rotating mass outside of the center of gravity for this relatively small rudder to stop that rotation. Yet engine out training and VMCA minimum controllable airspeed demos are required by the FAA in order for you to get a multi-engine rating. There's a lot of physics and math that you need to memorize when getting through your multi-engine training regarding VMC or minimum controllable airspeed, but there's a common misconception that's getting these pilots killed regularly. What is VMC, min controllable airspeed? Published VMC in your POH, Pilot Operating Handbook, is a speed at which the rudder no longer has the authority to overcome the yaw caused by the critical engine being inoperative under specific criteria mandated by the FAA. The lower the VMC is, the safer the aircraft is. Full stop right there. That's the misconception. Yes, that's generally true for the design of the aircraft. However, in training, when your VMC is 
close to or even less than the stall speed of the aircraft, you are operating in a very dangerous corner of the envelope. Why? Because it's so easy to enter a spin. What are the two ingredients of a spin? Stall and yaw. What do you got in spades when you're doing an engine out demonstration in a twin engine aircraft? Loads of yaw. So if you get that aircraft to stall before you begin to lose directional control of the aircraft, what's gonna happen? You're in a spin. So if a high VMC value is considered bad, students are required to memorize what all the different factors are that can increase your VMC. But what's important here is what decreases your VMC to the point to where your VMC can be at or less than your stall speed. The original BE-95 pilot's handbook is very light on information on emergency procedures and single engine procedures, and there's been numerous addendums added to these manuals over the years. But right here in single engine operation, it tells you that the flight and handling characteristics of your travel air on one engine are excellent. The airplane may be safely maneuvered and trimmed for normal hands-off operation, which is easily sustained by the operative engine as long as sufficient airspeed is maintained. And then it goes on to quote that the minimum controllable airspeed is 84 miles per hour indicated airspeed. Now remember that's based at gross weight and sea level conditions and with the critical engine. Now, I don't have the time in this dissertation to get into what is the critical engine or why the critical engine is critical, but in the case of the, the Travel Air and the Baron, usually it's considered the left engine is the critical engine because the loss of the left engine has a greater yawing moment than the loss of the right engine. So when students are practicing VMC demos, they usually come back on the power on the left engine. If VMC in the travel air is 84 miles an hour, that's the same as about 72 or 73 knots. And if we look at this updated stall speed chart for the travel air, depending on the gross weight, the stall speed indicated varies between 74 knots and 68 knots, very close to VMC. And this is the point that folks are missing. After a series of these accidents, this graph was added to the beach barren pilot operating manual, and this is the concept that a lot of folks are missing. What happens to your indicated stall speed as you go up in altitude? It remains pretty much the same. What happens to VMCA as you go up in pressure altitude? VMCA decreases. Why? Because you've got less power being produced by these naturally aspirated engines, and so you can maintain directional control at a lower speed. But what happens when you cross this boundary right here, when VMCA is less than stall speed or equal to stall speed? That's where you're in the world of test pilots. The single engine stall speed of a twin engine airplane is generally slightly below the power off stall speed for a given weight condition. Single engine stalls should not be conducted in multi-engine airplanes by other than qualified engineer test pilots. Engine out, Minimum control speeds generally decrease with altitude while the single engine stall speed remains approximately constant for normally aspirated engines. No such demos should be attempted when the altitude and temperature are such that you're in this area here. So what are we to do about this? Instructors, you've got to put your foot down. Literally, you've got to put your foot down. You've got to block the rudder. Instructors need to block the rudder, limit the amount of rudder travel so that the aircraft begins to lose directional control. In other words, the student hits the, the full rudder, your foot, and begins to lose the directional control of the aircraft before the aircraft slows down too close to its stall speed thus entering a spin, stall and yaw, the only two ingredients you need for a spin. The service bulletin on the Baron goes on to explain that in any twin engine airplane, the application of stall recovery, if the application of stall recovery controls is delayed, a rapid rolling and yawing motion may develop. More on that in a minute. Even against full aileron and rudder, don't use aileron in a spin. Yeah, you're gonna be trying to hold up the dead engine but not once you get in the spin. You need to neutralize that aileron. It's only exacerbating the situation. Resulting in the airplane becoming inverted during the onset of a spinning motion. Yeah, it'll flip 
right upside down on you. Once the airplane has been permitted to progress beyond the stall and is allowed to reach the rapid rolling and yawing condition, the pilot must then immediately initiate the generally accepted spin recovery procedure for multi-engine airplanes as follows. Not getting on the radio. Immediately move the control column full forward, apply full rudder opposite to the direction of the spin and reduce the power on both engines to idle. More on that in a minute. These three actions should be done as near simultaneously as possible, then continue to hold this control position until the rotation stops and neutralize all the controls and execute a smooth pullout. Basically a standard spin recovery procedure for any airplane. You've got to get that power back to idle. You got to keep the ailerons neutral. Ailerons should be neutral during the recovery. I would say during the entire spin. The longer the pilot delays before taking corrective action, the more difficult recovery will become. You do not have time to talk to any about this. You only have time to act. One of the first things I did once I got a Air Force pilot scholarship before I entered the Air Force is I went and bought a pit special aircraft and learned aerobatics in that pit special aircraft and got a lot of spin training in that aircraft before even going to the Air Force. One of the things we practice is intentional flat spins. The way you get an um, aircraft into a flat spin is you enter a normal spin and then you apply opposite aileron that begins to flatten out the spin and then you come in with the power. Anytime you add power to a spin, you flatten that spin. So in the comment section below, I often see folks that have no idea about flying at all to say, why don't you add opposite um, uh, power on the twin engine aircraft? Because you will simply exacerbate the situation. Same thing with the air ailerons. Now check this out. He's going to start this in a conventional spin, and then he's going to add the opposite aileron, which you can't see in this view and the engine power, which you can see very well, and watch how flat this spin gets. See how it flips upside down initially, and then it stabilizes into its standard spin. Power up, look at the horizon. Flat, right on the horizon, flat spin. How do you recover? Power off, ailerons neutral, opposite rudder, and recover. Another thing that can bite you is demonstrated in this excellent video by Martin Pauly, part two, multi-engine training, is that you may, in, particularly in higher performance aircraft like Barons, that Barons that are modified with even bigger engines, 300 horsepower engines, is that you may very well stall the rudder first before you stall the wing. If you stall the rudder, you are going to the rodeo quite suddenly. Remember, the rudder itself is just another flying surface with a critical angle of attack, and it can be stalled, and it looks something like this. Lift, lift, lift until you exceed the critical angle of attack. The rudder lets go, and bam, off you go to the rodeo. So we have to be continually reminded to keep our students and our instructors out of this very dangerous corner of the envelope when doing VMCA demonstrations. Right here, no such demonstration should be attempted when the altitude and temperature are such that an engine out minimum control speed is known or discovered to be close to the stalling speed. Loss of directional control or lateral control just as the stall occurs is potentially hazardous. You're going to get into a spin. So how do we prevent this? By awareness. Yeah, sure, you have to get high enough to be at a minimum safe altitude to start these maneuvers, but the best thing instructors can do, again, is put your foot down, limit the amount of rudder travel so that the students hits the limit of your rudder travel that you've applied by putting your foot down before stalling the aircraft. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.